Good afternoon, everyone. Long time no see. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Pato. Hindi <laughs> <laughs> na kami sanay. Based on that tone, sobrang wala na yat. <laughs> Parang putop eh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the bad dad jokes. The legitimate dad is now pulling bad dad jokes. But here Fuck we it are. Ba. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, actually, it's been you're a while, though. wondering. Yeah, exactly. You're probably wondering where where we've been, what we've been doing. And we had plans. We we really had plans. And we'll factor into things later. We had plans to release an episode in January. And like on two days before our recording, I had to get my wisdom teeth pulled out. So I was so sure that I'd meet up with Jeff for this podcast. But I had to cancel that the last minute. And I spent the two weeks mm-hmm. thereafter in a swollen state. And Mr. Mercado, ikaw, ano na nangyari sa'yo <laughs> since the <laughs> party? Ayun. <laughs> well, we're very grateful for the good news that our daughter received medically. That, yeah, um, she's not, she doesn't have any congenital genetic disease. So we're really glad about that. At the same time, her heart condition has improved drastically that the likelihood of her getting any surgery anytime soon has plummeted. Hopefully, and hopefully the, the, her condition continues. And while all of that is happening, we moved to Baguio uh, last December. And the reason for the move was really to uh, recover from what was 2020, <laughs> trying to figure out again um, where were we, who were we, and uh, maybe you know, maybe in the next episode we'll talk more about it. But very interesting how uh, when you are away from so many people, you tend to find yourself. What <laughs> you tend to realize again what's uh, what and who is important to you. So yes, I'm. I've been spending our. I I've been spending time in Baguio and. We are grateful for the weather and for actually the company that, that we have over there. Mm. So, yeah. so, but, at, however, at the moment of recording, <laughs> oh, go. February na. But that was now Feb. Much has happened. Yeah, and we're going to treat this episode and this recording, despite the date, as if it were still the January episode that we had planned. Because yeah. our, our topic. Is still relevant. Um, it's still technically the start of the year for all of us. And mm-hmm. I like that. Well, I brought up the whole thing about not being sure. I had plans, not being sure of it. And you talked about like this special circle of hell called 2020. So, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's that episode where we do have to talk about resolutions. Yes, we do. Fearless forecast. So, mm-hmm. madami tayong hindi planano last year. Ako, mara, marami din ako planano noong January. Pero, I'm pretty sure hindi natin yun na pangatawanan to mm-hmm. a certain extent. So, siguro, clean slate, hard reset. Especially you, Mr. Mercado, who has hard resetted in a different place. Um, What mm-hmm. is your New Year's resolution? Oh, surprisingly, um, perhaps the resolution is more... I can't believe I'm saying this, but it's more spiritual. Mm. Okay? So I think for the past few years, I've been very self, uh, self-love, self self-improvement. But, okay, but with all of the, I guess, change of events, change of circumstances, it's now hard for me not to consider that there are forces beyond me that are in play. And I'd like to get to know more these forces. And... My resolution for 2021 actually is to become more unashamedly religious. Uh, whether it be in my personal practice, whether it be in my public public interactions, that um, there was someone or there was someone who seemed to have wanted things to happen the way they did. And I'm intrigued. I want to get to know more about this person. So that's my resolution. How about you, Miss Regala? Ayoko na. <laughs> In the episode. <laughs> and, and recording. <laughs> <laughs> oh, pero nakaka-pressure. Dapat pala nauna ako. 
Um, <laughs> yung sa akin lang naman, I think we're similar from where we came from. I had observed that last year, I wasn't doing so well um, in a combination of mental, emotional, yeah, personal states, di ba? And you know about mm-hmm. this because we're friends. But um, <clears throat> I really strove to take a proactive approach to the way that I did things. Like, I used to be a disbeliever of mindfulness. Again, you know this. <laughs> yes. When this trend started, yeah. I had a lot of like, issues. The adamant, ano yun? You're the adamant uh, skeptic. Yeah, I start. I always start with skepticism. But um, <laughs> even if I can't practice it, I notice that there are instances because I've gotten the help naman to find it. Parang there are instances wherein I can be more mindful. It doesn't mean that I'm practicing mindfulness, but rather I could be more mindful of the things that I do, when I do it, how I do it. Ganun. Um, so my resolution is dapat sabihin ko originally to journal the whole year. <laughs> but I layo, <laughs> diba? But I realized that it's actually part of my practice. Um that parang halfway through last year. Yeah. It's really just invigorating. It was a good reset. It cleared my mind. And so far, I've been doing well. They do say that um, since it's already end of Feb. Um, and you know, and they say that it takes how many days to form a habit? 20 days? 10,000 hours? Oh, no, 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 sorry. That, 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 that's a skill. Pala. <laughs> Mastery. Pala, sorry. <laughs> I yeah, forgot. But, but yeah, you probably know the details yeah yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Um, but i've been doing my journaling for consistently since the start of january and it's been exciting it's not something i dread like other things in my life but it's it's really great so i resolve to be more mindful and uh, one of the ways that that manifests is through my journaling practice by the way people who are listening that's a big change because you had had you met jika my friend Few months ago. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm happy that uh, the resolution that you're pursuing is something that's very personal. I mean, thank you for sharing it to us. That uh, there was an acknowledgement of, I guess, change, a need for change, and the resolution to continue on that path of change. Let's yeah. see how how do we go about that though. I know. And it, it, like, siguro, one of the things kasi that I noticed while thinking about this topic and making the outline for a script is really that what are we don't really think about the factors behind why and how we formulate our resolutions. Like, practice na lang siya. Oh, what's your resolution? What's your resolution? Pero, like, I mean, we just did it. Kasi siguro, teachers tayo, we like to look at things retroactively. <laughs> Pero, diba? Like, more often than not, we don't notice it, but our resolutions are based on things that we did or did not do in the past or things that we observed in the past. So, ano yung, ano yung, ulit, ano ulit yung past behavior or observation mo about yourself, Mr. Mercado? Na ano, na parang privately, I was, I was a, a believer. <laughs> but I never really embrace the community aspect of, of, of belief that I was content with praying on my own. But, you know, uh, as, as things might have it, um, faith or anything religious is better off understood when it's, when it's practiced with a community. Parang, kasi, parang that's what I found eh, nung, in, my, in my journey with um, <clears throat> figuring out what to do for Yana, that uh, people were willing to take us in. People were willing to talk about the faith, which I had a hard time finding <laughs> for, for a while. Because um, context, I used to be a CLE teacher, and we often treated faith as a subject, something that faith as something that we should dilute somehow to be able to communicate to our students. But it's rare that you get to sit in a corner or in a place and then have, have have an adult conversation about about faith so that's what i discovered around december and when i when i found out that, that there was this community i realized that you know maybe um keeping my faith to myself worked before but given the new the new circumstances i realized that you know i can also work with this new one 
that I'd like to explore more about this community that helps me understand something that's also very important to me. So yeah, um, looking back, I was content on my own, but now I want to reach out more. I want to um, <clears throat> learn more <laughs> from people aside from the aside from my own. Uh, sorry, I want to hear more voices other than my own <laughs> about me. <laughs> and sentimental, namin. This is not our main goal with uh, the session, but we really are. Right, like, because <laughs> we can all we can all admit the man that twenty twenty was a bad year, and we really were unprepared. And the best part I think that we can take away from it is that, I mean, quoting Kylie Jenner from the year twenty fourteen, by on. 2014 really made me realize things and there is value in that statement that more of a, more often than not we were this way in the past or we believed these things in the past but due to certain events for example a pandemic or in Mr. Mercado's case a family crisis quote unquote I don't know what better word choice is there but you know what you used to believe could change and what you used to know could change <laughs> Oh, diba? We're back to TOK. <laughs> yes. Oh, diba? We're back to TOK. <laughs> We're back to TOK right there. Um, of course, resolutions, we, right, we just attacked it from the angle of looking at the past. But also, we set resolutions for reasons. For reasons. Maybe we'll get to that in a bit. Girl, let's go into the TOK stuff right now. Diba? Um, the greatest thing about, um, what do you call this, about resolutions is that really we base our resolutions on things that we believe to be certain for ourselves. Is that a valid <clears throat> thing, Mr. Mercado? Oh, yes, so we always desire to be consistent, whether in our thoughts and in, in our actions. And that's why behaviors get set. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's why. Sorry, if not psychology. But, tama yun, tama na. <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. But yeah, um, ano tayo dito? when we talk about resolutions, often they're based on certainties. And the greatest thing about it is that when we proclaim our resolutions, we proclaim them with a certain amount of certainty as well. <laughs> totally discount. With, with confidence. With confidence, <laughs> diba? And we tend to discount na 365 and one-fourth days in the year are actually still uncertain ahead of us. So why do people set up resolutions? We're not immune to it. How certain are we that we can fulfill the resolutions that we set up for ourselves in the first place? Mm -hmm. Psychology, Mr. Mercado, oh, I'm oh. sorry. No, what's up with you? Like, what's your take on it, kahit on a personal level? The, I mean, I guess it helps that we all agree that the year ends, quote-unquote, mm -hmm. by December. And it, it also helps that we have things to look forward to, okay? Because again, for behavior, um, our minds love to know what's, what's to be expected because that's just how we were built to survive. We need to know where, when danger will occur. We need to know where, where safe havens are so that we can survive. So I think having resolutions is just another expression of that desire for consistency, desire for um, predictability. So, you know, claiming that th this is what you want to, to happen in your life is one way of, of asserting <laughs> the, the predictability that you desire. So, yeah, I think that's how it works. Okay. So would you say that you're a resolution maker? <laughs> uh, yes, I am. Um, there are... But usually the resolution that I am making is something like a behavior that I want to see more often in me. Mm -hmm. Because I've, I've, by looking at the past, I saw that these behaviors were more helpful. These behaviors were more, or these habits were, um, helped me feel better, helped me li live fully, more, uh, uh, fuller. So I want to continue that. Th that's my reason for making these resolutions. Um, I don't make resolutions. I only made one for this episode. <laughs> this Welcome this back. <laughs> but I think it's about time that I started making resolutions. Because, like, I'm yeah. Not, I mean, uh, since you mentioned that, so why don't? Why didn't? Why weren't? Why aren't you that person who makes resolutions? Oh no, this is not all part of the script. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 
why didn't I make resolutions? Mainly because my main problem was that I had a strong enough belief in what I was capable of. Um, and that kind of pretty much set or limited what I thought or believed that I could do. Yung mga tipong, oh, um, for this year, if, if I were to make a resolution, kunwari, for the year 2020, I would say, for this year, I want to send, I, I need to write three papers, okay, and then send them and present in a conference. Like, I knew at the get-go that I would not do that. So I wouldn't write it down and I wouldn't resolve to do it. Mainly because I already knew and believed that, eh, I don't work that way. Or if I set like say I plan if if my resolution for the year 2020 was um to write down every or like take account of my hours of sleep, um habit track. I knew at the get go that I would be inconsistent. Like immediately January one palang alam ko na, na hindi ko siya <laughs> So hindi yeah. ko na siya isusulat. And knowing that, parang may contrast tayo. Eh. Yung sa akin is I'm so set. Na, like, I know what I know. Ito na yun. So, no, there's no attempt for me, at least previous Jika, past Jika, um, <laughs> to make an effort to resolve to do something. You know? So, I, I don't know if I made sense. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I think based on our topic for this afternoon as well, a topic about certainty, you operated within uh, what you considered as valid but what you considered as um uh, um things things that that, that you can control yeah. and i think that's one thing about resolutions eh? you're 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 also doing that as a risk you're you're you are committing to a risk that should you not be able to do it okay would you be willing to admit <laughs> such a such a failure to achieve <laughs> cool. goals or 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 the other way it might be is that for some people they might they might insist on having resolutions not because they know that they're going to perfectly um, achieve it but they just have something to work for something to to strive for whether they fail today they come back to the diet again the next day <laughs> or they decide to show up again on, in the gym three months after they have they have enlisted. <laughs> parang, you know, parang, uh, when it comes to certainty, at least for in your case, you were determined that what you thought you knew and, and could achieve today will be the same thing tomorrow, next week, the next month. So yeah, it made it made sense what you said. Thank you so much for like processing the entire thing. I didn't know that we could relate it, but it made sense. <laughs> <laughs> it leads me to the next part of our script. Because I like I was I was so bothered when I was making the script. Like, am I making sense? Am I making valid points? I mean, this is why you get a co-host so that they can serve you. But just in case Mr. Mercado negated that whole sharing portion, I actually had a backup here called a study. Oh, diba? A study, yes. Wow. So academic. Up. It is a big study because like, I typed in New Year's resolution journal articles. It was the first one that came up and it's legit. It's called, um, it's by Martin Oscarson et al., a large scale experiment on New Year's resolution. Approach oriented goals are more successful than avoidance oriented goals. And I was like, speak English. So I had to read more. <laughs> <laughs> my jargon thank you for having a psychology co-host but yeah, yeah hey. um it was it was a really compelling study i didn't like i i went through the most essential parts and it was it essentially formalized all mm-hmm. these questions or the answers to the questions that we wanted to ask in this session so uh, mr mercado i've, I've been talking a lot maybe you want to like <laughs> go th- Kasi expert ka dito, psychology case study ito. Ano ang over yeah. for the case? <laughs> the deets. Oh no. Deets. I, just re- I just read the uh, abstract. <laughs> A skill that most psychologists uh, take for granted. <laughs> you know, I copy-pasted. That's uh, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bullets. I changed it to bullets. See, see. Ooh. 
it seems like um, yes, tama naman yung yung results na participants with approach oriented goals um, were significantly more successful than those with avoidant oriented goals. So it's essentially meaning that um, if your resolutions are something that you something new that you want to achieve, you're more successful at 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 at, at achieving them rather than um, if your resolution was let's say to avoid drinking this amount of coke coffee. per day oh. <laughs> or coffee <laughs> parang at least from their studies people who have the i guess more concrete something that you can work for something that you can that you can measure a sense of improvement with okay that becomes something that's easier to maintain but then again if you want to simply avoid <laughs> drinking more coffee than the usual baka ano siya um because you're thinking about avoiding it <laughs> all the more all the more it stays in your within your you know within your cognitive vicinity <laughs> that's me ano eh? <laughs> for what i've been doing for 30 thank you <laughs> I think that's the no. <laughs> okay, as a bit of an overview, first and foremost, yeah. I'm telling you guys, we're gonna link the study because we gotta give credit where credit is due. The right? mm-hmm. I'm an English teacher, he's a psych teacher. Credit your sources, please. Um, but other <laughs> than that, just as an overview of the whole context, and Mr. Mercado, I'll be asking you to define some terms. It All is right. here that a thousand sixty-six participants from the Swiss general public were randomized into three groups wherein they had different approaches to fulfilling resolutions. And majority of the resolutions were with regard to physical health, weight loss, and eating habits. Mm-hmm. All interconnected. Okay, but um, so there were three groups, one without support, so I don't have to explain that. Another with some support wherein they'd identify like their supportive person. Um, and then that point person would ha- would have monthly follow-ups, and then also there would be a support email. This part, I'm not really sure of where the support email came from, but the support email essentially had content about like how to cope or how to manage the stresses of still maintaining your resolution. The third group was an extended group with everything from the sum support group, but they also had the advantage of business management, smart goal setting. (laughs) Specific Measurable, what's the A? Achievable. Achievable. I know the T, I don't know what the R is. Reproducible? I <laughs> uh, it's reasonable. Reasonable. <laughs> it's a, there's an entire section in the paper that says, I know. Uh, yeah, smart goals. But yeah, guys, you can Google this. You're <laughs> like, more than half my students are BM students. So, like, <laughs> Can figure it out and T is time bound. So mm-hmm. no support, some support, and then extended support. Um, and what was proven through the study was that participants with approach-oriented goals were significantly more successful than those with avoidance-oriented goals. Um, and then the other one was that the best way to achieve your goal is to have not no support, not extended support, but rather just some support. Um, and basta after one year of doing this, more than half the respondents said that they successfully achieved their resolutions. Ang galang, round of applause for these strangers that we don't know. From, Sw- from Sweden. From Sweden. Not representative of the Philippines, obviously. Nope. But this is the that we <laughs> Not can... even the world, but anyway. <laughs> yeah. um, but siguro, what's the whole thing about approach-orientedness and avoidance-orientedness? We're getting into psych now. I'm just curious. Yeah. <clears throat> well, the thing with, I guess, with approach orientedness is that there you have a concrete goal you want to achieve. Mm. So, <clears throat> I want to gain muscle mass. Okay. I want to, I want to um, be able to write ten pages for my thesis <laughs> yeah. per day. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> uh, Parang it's it's very concrete. Something that you can measure. It's something that you can you can see grow. Okay. Whereas I guess for the avoidance uh, oriented goals, um, <clears throat> your main task is merely to, as the term mentions, it's to avoid consuming, avoid um, indulging in a particular activity. But, but the, 
but the, I guess the the disadvantage there is that um, with the avoidance oriented goal, you're still thinking about the thing you have to avoid. So it all becomes, it all becomes, uh, I guess, ironic. <laughs> that even though you're supposed to be avoiding it, but you're, but but it's there in your mind. It becomes harder now to not think about it. So so that's the thing with the mind. And uh, if you want to stop thinking about something, thinking about it and then saying stop. Won't work. <laughs> so, so once you, once you think, once you start considering what you shouldn't be thinking about, it already pops up. <laughs> it's it's something unpleasant, and because it's, it, it's unpleasant, you want it to go away. You, the more thinking you exert for it to go away, whereas for the 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 approach oriented goal, you're not even thinking about it anymore. There's something else that you're that you're that that you're mainly focused on. So instead of so instead of let's say avoiding six cups of coffee in a day, you make a goal instead to drink eight glasses of water a day. Oh, it's like a slight reframe. Mm-hmm. It's like a slight reframe. Oh. But but this time you're not you're no longer thinking about the thing you have to avoid. That's smart. As in you 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 completely avoided it by not thinking about it. That's smart. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Social science. I mean, human sciences. Thank you, psychology. But like, I I I know it now. All sounds too technical for our listeners or our viewers. <laughs> but like, or like, it doesn't even sound too okay. I just wanted to understand what the this whole approach and avoidance oriented goals was were mainly because, well, come to think of it, I just wanted to know to what degree certainty factored into resolutions. And like I don't know if this makes sense, but that's why you're my co-host. Thank you. <laughs> I'll try my best. <laughs> yung takeaway ko from it is that all sciences, human sciences and the natural sciences, try to ascertain certain factors that influence certain phenomena. Diba? Um, in this case, where this study attempts to ascertain what factors influence creating a new year's resolution. And Pretty much, it said here that there are some things that we can be sure of. Diba? That approach-oriented goal-setting works better than avoidance-oriented goal-setting. Um, either way, both, both methods depend on things that the respondent might have to be certain of. Diba? Like, I'm certain that I will not, in six months, be able to update my planner. So I'm not even going to resolve to do that. I mean, I've done yep. that. Yeah. So parang mm-hmm. yon. But despite the certainties included or brought up by the study, there are still uncertain factors. We like, for example, we still don't know to what extent um, some support actually helps people succeed in doing their resolutions over, say people with extended support and people without any support at all. So like, ang hirap palang pumili ng resolution. At ang hirap mag-resolve to do something. Ano ba yan? Yun lang naman yung naisip ko. Yun yung main takeaway ko from the whole thing. Ikaw. Well. <laughs> Ikaw, yes. Well, um, the, the thing with the resolutions is that, yes, there, there needs to be a base level of certainty. There needs to be a base level of confidence that you can achieve what you what you um, set out to do. Okay. Now again, I guess because of language, uh, we're not saying that um, by by using a, the avoidance approach, you're not going to to achieve your resolution. You still will, but when you compare, let's say, the number of people who use that approach as as and with the number of people who use a different approach, okay. Those with, those with the other approach seem to um, be better at maintaining their resolutions. But it doesn't mean that um, because they're better, you were not able to maintain yours. You still, you still were. Okay? So just going back, um, <clears throat> there needs to be a basis of certainty, definitely. You need to know what you can and can't do. Okay? And what, what, what might be different is that for some people, they consciously think about their resolutions. And that's why they're able to uh, remind themselves that, oh, wait, I did have this resolution before. 
I did make this um, commitment for this particular change in behavior. And because of my desire to be consistent with my thoughts and in my actions, <clears throat> either my actions will change to conform to the thoughts or my thoughts will be reframed to affirm my actions. <laughs> Chicken and egg, how complicated. Yes, yes, yes. So when it comes to resolutions, um, yeah, um, there's no guarantee or there's no, uh, so there's no way for us to tell you that if you do these steps, you will make it all the way to, <laughs> all the way to next year. Okay? That really depends on, on where you are. But the, the, the act of making the resolution already provides you with something to look forward to, something to expect, something to, to shape your behavior towards. <laughs> and I think there's, there's, there's value in that. Well, oh. that's the episode. Joke! <laughs> Actually, um, wala sa script yun. So, mas maganda yun kesa dun sa script. Um, I like that we could actually close this episode by essentially affirming you guys. Like, one, thank you, Mr. Mercado. On my end, I feel affirmed that it's not really too late to have a resolution. And that resolutions could be productive for me because yun nga, I am avoidance-oriented. Um, I am avoidance-oriented and... <clears throat> Given that 2020 was the year that I opened myself up to things and new knowledge and new beliefs and just like generally opened myself up to the world, um, this is great. I, I, it doesn't make me dread doing tasks or accomplishing or resolving to do things. It's actually very encouraging and empowering right now. I did not anticipate this episode being as encouraging. <laughs> Yes, but thank as, you. As, as as therapeutic. Yes, therapeutic. Exactly, like my plant. Hindi pa po na mamatay na halaman. So oh, good job. Good po yun. Yo. So ayun lang naman. Ikaw, Mr. Mercado, any final says about this topic before we say goodbye? Uh, well, um, <clears throat> if you want to commit to your resolutions. It often helps if you have someone who knows what your resolutions are and are willing to remind you that these are your resolutions. Okay? There are, I remember before, there are studies that show that if you publicly announce your resolution, oftentimes you're the ones who will not be able to, <laughs> to um, uh, okay. follow through because um, having to publicly announce it feels like you've done half the job oh true so you tend to <laughs> no longer exert as much effort whereas 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 if it were private okay you <clears throat> are focused on the goals that you set for yourself you are focused on uh, wanting to to accomplish it but Doing it alone might be a very daunting task. So have someone who can remind you gently <laughs> that these are your resolutions and remind you of why you even why you even decided to have those. Because we tend to change <laughs> our reasoning when we don't when we don't kind of look back to them often enough. Oh. And because I have declared yeah. my New Year's resolution and you have yours, to each, we have to each other, you are now my point person. <laughs> you are my sum Of support. course. And our monthly check-in yeah. is this podcast. <laughs> I'd be honored. Thank you, Swear. <laughs> and with that, bye everyone. We'll see you in the next bye episode. Bye for now. We can't make promises about our outfits, but it'll be a different topic. Thank you so much. <laughs>